With the start of the war in Ukraine, strange explosions of Russian tanks began to appear on the internet. They explode as if from within, flashing like fireworks. The explosion is so strong that the tank's turret flies many meters into the air. The turret of a Russian tank, together with a cannon, weighs about two tons. But it flies up like an empty beer can. Imagine how powerful this explosion is. Falling back to the asphalt, the tank turret crashes into it like in butter. What happens to Russian tanks and why do they explode like that? I spent time and found out that such explosions happen for two reasons. First, Russian tanks have several vulnerabilities in their design. Secondly, this happens when they are properly exposed to the target weapon. A Russian tank can be destroyed either with a javelin or a low anti-tank missile, or with a regular grenade, if dropped directly into the hull of the turret. Now I will explain to you how it works. We will look at both examples on real documented video footage. In general, the turret is the weakest point of all Russian Soviet-made tanks. At the moment, all Russian tanks are very outdated and inferior to Western-made tanks. The first big problem with Russian tanks is how to store ammunition. They are placed in a circle inside the turret. The compartment holds 40 shells. As seen in this scheme, tankers actually sit on them. We can say that they are sitting on a powder keg. See how ammunition is placed in the Leopard and Abrams tanks. The scheme shows that the ammunition is placed in the rear of the tower in a specially protected capsule. In the event of an explosion of ammunition, the blast wave takes them up without hitting the crew. In Russian tanks, the crew will be lifted into the air along with exploding ammunition. Secondly, there are hatches and openings in the turret of Russian tanks, through which the cumulative fire jet from the NLO missile penetrates the inside of the tank. But more on that later. And you can even drop a grenade from a drone into an open hatch. And the tank is done! Once inside, the grenade explodes and ignites everything that can burn. The fire then intensifies, and the temperature rises to such an extent that it causes the projectiles to detonate, causing a firework explosion. The more shells in the tank, the stronger the explosion is. The main thing is to ignite the tank inside the turret. Then the detonation of shells is guaranteed. This can be done with both an anti-tank missile and a standard grenade. US Army War College professor Robert Hamilton says that the force of the explosion is capable of instantly evaporating the crew of such a tank. Look at this video. A Russian tank was hit by a javelin missile. The explosion threw the turret 50 meters into the air. So there were a lot of shells in the tank, and he was going to complete the task. Watch some more explosions of Russian tanks. The impression is that the tank is torn from the inside. Tankers know what danger they are in. Therefore, they try to leave the tank at the slightest ignition and run as far away from it as possible, as we see in this video. The tanker got out of the tank and ran away. He knows what will happen next. And indeed, then the tank explodes. Crew survivability has long been a priority in American tanks, unlike Russian tanks. It's just a difference in the design of the ammunition storage compartment and a difference in prioritization. For Russia, people are the same expendable material as machinery. For Western countries, a person is a primary value. This also affected the design of tanks. Let's take a closer look at how the Javelin missile destroys a Russian tank. The front of the tank is very well protected by the armor of about 300 mm. Therefore, a frontal hit will not bring any result. Also, dynamic protection is often installed on the sides of Russian tanks, which reflects the kinetic energy of the explosion dissipating it. Therefore, breaking through the tank directly in the front or from the side will be very difficult. But all Russian tanks have a very vulnerable upper part of the turret, even with dynamic protection. The armor here is very thin, and there are holes and slots in the turret. The Javelin missile is specifically designed for this occasion. After the missile is launched, its engine is turned on and it rises up to a height of 150 meters. Further, with the help of gyroscopes and engines of the control system, the missile is aimed at the target along the desired trajectory so that the missile hits the tank almost vertically. 
This is very clearly visible in these video frames. The missile strikes the upper part of the combat vehicle. An explosion and detonation of ammunition in the tank occurs instantly, and the turret is turned down with great force along with the crew. In this case, the crew of the tank will not even have time to understand what happened to them. The British and low anti-tank system works in an even more elegant way. The missile flies over the tank's turret and explodes, hitting the tank with strong flame jets. This fire quickly penetrates the smallest gaps in the turret of Russian tanks, causing a fire inside the tank. A fire inside quickly leads to the death of the crew and the explosion of ammunition. Then the same thing happens. The turret is turned off the tank. By the way, the Russian command tried to protect its tanks even before the invasion of Ukraine. A special metal grid was welded onto the tanks, hoping this would help. But the practice has shown that it is useless, especially against the NLO missile. The flame jet easily passes through the grid. Only complete sealing of the turret could protect the tank from such a missile, since the fire, under high pressure, can penetrate even the smallest cracks. A fire catches the inside of the tank turret, which under the influence of the airflow flares up, increasing the temperature. And this leads to the explosion of shells. And here is how tanks are destroyed with a conventional grenade. Soldiers often leave tanks with an open hatch in the turret on the battlefield. In this case, we see an abandoned Ukrainian tank. For those who do not know, this is the same Soviet-made T-72 tank that Russia uses. Both Ukrainians and Russians have learned to drop grenades from drones very accurately. The grenade hits right inside the tank and starts a fire, quickly leading to ammunition detonation. After that, the tank is virtually unusable. When a tank has a lot of ammunition and all of them explode from the inside, this leads to such damage that the tank turns into a pile of scrap metal and cannot be restored. Sometimes the tank is simply torn apart and tracks and parts of the hull fly off to the sides. In the first month of the war, the Ukrainians managed to destroy hundreds of Russian tanks. In some cases, as you can see in these shots, entire tank columns were destroyed. All this suggests that Russian tanks are not suitable for modern warfare. They are more like a powder keg for the crew than a reliable defense for the advancing soldiers. Obviously, the Russians will have to abandon their obsolete tanks completely or heavily modernize them soon. To do this, it will be necessary to hermetically protect the tank turret and change the ammunition storage location. It is unknown whether Russia will be able to solve these problems, but for now, watch my other videos on the channel.